Good day, subscribers. I know it's been a long time since part 6 of this series came out, but finally, today, is part 7, the final part of How to Build a Robinhood Auto Stock Trader in Python. In today's video, we're going to take the graphr.py file that we made in part 6 and integrate it into the trader.py file that we made in part 2. And also, at the end of the video, I'm going to be announcing a new channel that I'm starting that's going to be on a totally different subject. So if that's something that's interesting to you, wait till the end of the video and you'll see it there. So, without waiting any longer, let's jump in. So before we jump into the code, I just wanted to give a short explanation as to why Part 7 took so long to come out. Well, really, it was a combination of things. First, I've been making the other parts of this series during my semester off from school, and when school started back up, I just lost a lot of that free time that I had previously had. Second, I was helping a friend move by letting them store a bunch of their stuff in my room while they were looking for a new apartment, and it just wasn't appropriate for me to be making videos with all of their stuff in my room. And third, I was just going through a really big decision in my personal life, and I just really needed to spend the time focusing on that decision and focusing on my relationship with God. Either way, I want to thank all of my subscribers. I'm so happy to announce that the channel has broken over 1,000 subscribers, which is super exciting. I really hope that the content that comes out from this channel is as fun for you as it is interesting and fun for me to be making the videos and seeing your comments. Lastly, let's do a quick review of what we've done in this series so far. So first, we designed a trader.py file to interact with the Robinhood platform. Next, we made a tradestrat.py file, which housed our actual trading strategy that would be used to make buy and sell commands. And then, we made a graphr.py file to give us visual feedback. And in this video, we're going to integrate that graphr.py file into the trader.py file from part 2. Now, without any more waiting, let's fire up our favorite IDEs and get started. All right, so here we are back at the desktop. As you guys can see, I have my trader.py file open over here and my grapher.py file open, which is the same file we built in part six. So we're gonna be working on the trader.py file today. Uh, as you guys can see, I have my imports, my functions that we made in a few of the other videos, my buy and sell commands, which are active right now, so they will actively buy and sell real stocks. And then the main loop, which just walks through each one of our stocks, uh, checks if the market's open, walks through each one of our stocks, and then waits 30 seconds and repeats the process. So just to show you guys, let's run it just to be sure, pytrader.py. And it looks at my stocks and it's gonna go through each one. And buy, hold, sell, buy. So it is working the way we want it to. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna integrate that grapher.py file into the trader.py file that we've made. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to come over to here and we have to tell our Python file that we're adding this new thing. So we have to do imp import grapher. And that's gonna let us pull from the grapher.py file that we just made. So now what we have to do is we have to feed the grapher.py file the information that it needs to actually build those graphs. So we have to go, so all the work, uh, we're gonna build one function and then the rest of the work is going to be done in the actual um, body, the actual main loop. So let's do that function. And that function is called build data frames. So I'm gonna put it right here. So it's def build data frames and it takes four attributes. So it takes df trades, which is a data frame, trades dict, which is a dictionary, df prices, and price dict. And let me just make sure I have pandas. Yeah, I do. Okay, because th these are gonna be pandas data frames. And so what it does is it takes, uh, first it figures out what time it is. So it takes the um, first eight bits of whatever the string um, comes in as that is the time. And I could show you guys, but it's basically just a time stamp. Um, it takes that and then it creates a dictionary called DF trades and DF prices and sets a new row in those dictionaries that have the trade prices, uh, the trade dict, and then the price dict. So what we've traded and what the prices for all of the stocks we're looking at are. 
Uh, and then it just returns DF trades and DF prices. And those are the dictionaries that are used in the graph.py file to actually build the graph. So now that we've got that put in, let's save our file. Um, that's not going to change anything if I run it, so I'm not going to run it again uh, quite yet. But now what we need to do is at the beginning of the loop, right before we start, we have to introduce these new um, these new things that we just made. So basically trader.py file, I'm um, sorry, trade dict, price dict, trade, uh, DF trades, and DF prices. So we just start off trade dict as a dictionary of all of our stocks with zero, uh, same with price dict, and then DF trades and DF prices are just pandas, panda data frames that have uh, the columns that, for each one of our stocks. So we start those off right over here, and now we're gonna get into the main loop and actually change these parts so that they integrate with our entire system. So again, let's save. And we're going to go down to just about the bottom, right before um, we sleep. And one more over. Oop. And we're first going to do for prices and for holding. So we have right here. So we take price dict and for each stock, because we're looping through each one of the stocks, and we say the price is the price that we've gotten before. And we load that into the price dict. And so we say if holdings, so if we have some holdings in that stock and the trade was not sell, then we're holding the stock, right? If we own a stock, so we have more than zero shares and we, did, we weren't just told by the trader to sell that stock, then we're still holding it and we put in the trader, we say um, the trade for that one is a hold, we're holding the stock. Otherwise, if, the, if we're not holding any stock, so we have zero of that stock and the trade was not a buy, meaning we weren't going to pick up any new uh, shares of that stock, then the trade is a wait. Now, the purpose for this little section right here is just to form a difference between holding a stock and not holding a stock when nothing's going on. So before, our trader had basically three options. It was either going to hold, as in not do anything, buy as in pick up shares of that stock or sell as in give away shares of that stock or sell shares of that stock. But we needed a way to tell the difference between holding a stock and doing nothing or not having the stock and doing nothing. Uh, and this is kind of the way to do that. That way, when we're building the graph, we can have those two things look different. So we'll know if we're holding a stock or not. So this is just the way that I've done it. You can do it your own way if you find a better way, um, but this way worked for me. And then the last thing, we just need to add this new uh, feature into the trade dict. So now we're adding what we need into the price dict and we're also adding what we need into the trade dict. And then the last thing, right before we sleep for 30 seconds, we're gonna actually build the active graph. And so this is gonna come in two lines. The first one, we're gonna pull from our build data frames function that we just added up top. And we're going to make DF trades and DF prices by handing it our current DF trades, trade deck that we just updated, our current DF prices, and then also price dict that we just, um, that we're just updating. And then lastly, we're gonna pull from our grapher.py file, and it's gonna be grapher.activegraph. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna normalize it. So before we pass it to the um, active graph function in our grapher file, we're gonna normalize our data frame so that everything is balanced off of one. That way you don't have stocks that are priced, you know, if one stock's at $100 and another stock's at $1, and they each move the same percentage amount, that way they'll both stay on the graph instead of the graph being like 100 points high, which uh, you wouldn't really be able to see very well. So we're gonna normalize our DF prices and we're also gonna pass it our DF trades. That's gonna to go to the active graph function in our grapher file and it's gonna run that and uh, it's gonna give us that visual feedback on the graph. So that's really it. That's really all you have to add. Uh, I'll run it for a little bit so that you guys can see how it works. And remember, these trades are being active, but we are using that trading strategy that we made before, which is extremely simple. And I would not be surprised if it didn't make us any money today, if it actually lost us money. Um, I have no real idea what it's going to do. Definitely work on your own trading strategy before uh, really implementing this with any 
an amount of money, but let's move this over to the side so we can watch it. And uh, we'll just kind of watch it play for maybe a minute or two. Um, and I'll just maybe fast forward this part a little bit so it goes a little bit cleaner. All right, so let's end it there. Let's go over here and close it out. So as you guys could see, um, we had great visual feedback, just that chart going up and down. Um, I saw that there was one vertical line uh, that was green, which means there was a buy and that's where it is right here. We bought um, some GNUS at 1.8. Um, and over here in our dictionary that we have printing out, we can see it's right there. Uh, other than that, it was just a bunch of holds and weights. Um, again, hold means that I own some of the stock and I'm just not going to sell it yet. And weight means I don't own any of the stock and I don't want to buy it yet. Um, but overall, that is the entire trader. I'm going to be uploading the, um, the files that I have onto GitHub. Uh, and if you guys want to download it, you can download it um, from the URL that I'm going to have right down here below. And it'll also be in the video description. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know, but make sure you work on that trading strategy before you just implement it because if you don't, you will lose all your money. <laughs> so I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed making it. Uh, so let's do a final wrap up and then that'll be it. All right, there you have it. The Robinhood Auto Stock Trader is finished. And now we have a working trading bot that'll buy and sell stocks and give us visual feedback. As promised, I've uploaded the code that I've used in these videos to the GitHub for this channel, which is right here, and a link will also be in the video description. I've really loved making this series, and would love to hear what you guys have done with the code, how you've modified it, and any success you've had. Lastly, before I sign off, I just want to share with you the new channel that I'm starting called HBK Adventures. HBK Adventures is going to be all about hiking, biking, kayaking, and everything outdoors. So if that's something that interests you, I'm going to leave a short video at the end of this one to click on and you can subscribe to that channel. I'd love to have you there. As always, thanks and subscribe.